The structure of sertolizumab makes it somewhat different in pregnancy than the other TNF inhibitors. So the other TNF inhibitors are based on an antibody, um, and they have a, basically the full human antibody structure to them. Um, and therefore, they have a specific part of that antibody called the FC portion, and that FC portion is actually what is grabbed um, uh, at, the, uh, at, at the placenta and drag and makes a drug drag across the placenta into the baby. So it's that FC portion that is really key to transferring the drug from the mother to the infant um, during uh, pregnancy. Sertolizumab, the structure is different, however, and it does not have an FC portion. Instead, has this big kind of globular molecule. And so um, it can't be grabbed and pulled across the placenta. Therefore, when we look at um, uh, babies that have been treated with TNF inhibitors during pregnancy, um, when we look at adalimumab or infliximab exposed infants, we see that there's actually a pretty high level of drug in the baby compared to the mother. In fact, the baby can actually generally has a higher concentration of the drug on the day of delivery compared to the mom. With sertolizumab, on the other hand, because it's such a, a different molecule, it doesn't move across the placenta. And if you check the baby's level on the day of delivery, the level is either zero or very close to zero and much, much, much lower than what it is in the mother. So um, because of that, uh, we use the medications in the second half of pregnancy a little bit differently. So for sertolizumab, I'm comfortable with patients taking it really through delivery. I often actually have them skip the week of delivery just because of infection risk, but they can really take it, it won't harm their baby to take the sertolizumab throughout delivery and just keep taking it through lactation and breastfeeding. Um, the other TNF inhibitors, however, I generally stop um, about two months or so before delivery. Um, and that, the reason for that is it gives the um, drug time to get out of the mother's system, and therefore it also will get out of the baby's system. So that way, when the baby is born, it might have a smidgen of drug, but it won't have any kind of level of drug that would make us really worry about the risk for infection. There's really not a clear guideline as to exactly when to stop each of those medications. I personally pick somewhere between 30 and 34 weeks for most of them. I also negotiate that a little bit with the woman based on how her arthritis is doing. If she's really having a lot of trouble with her arthritis, I might continue it a little bit longer. If she's doing fantastically, I might stop it a little bit sooner. But then in those patients that I've stopped it, it's key to restart it right after delivery. So um, we know that women who are on TNF inhibitors before and during pregnancy, if they don't start a TNF inhibitor um, back after delivery, they will most likely flare. And so I start people back um, one or two weeks after delivery onto the, their TNF inhibitor, um, and they can take it with breastfeeding without difficulty, um, and that really avoids the postpartum flare um, quite effectively.